Hey folks, uh, it's really good to be in and amongst you. Uh, today we're talking about Turkish politics, a uh, journey from legacy of the Ottoman Empire to the modern Turkey. Most of you are exposed to Turkish politics because of me, but now you, you're going to he hear it for the, for the real, like voluntarily. So, uh, can we... I'm going to do that, okay. Ah, this is our agenda, the, the things we're, we're going to talk today. I mean, um, we're not going to talk about the whole Turkish politics, but the, the politics of the Republic of Turkey, uh, for that matter. So, to understand that first, we have to start with uh, a brief insight to the uh, Ottoman politics, to uh, understand what, a modern, what the modern Turkey uh, represents and what uh, the old system was, and uh, the, the decay of the Ottoman Empire, to understand uh, the uh, like how the Ottomans lost minority and how people have left left with uh, Turkish uh, Turkish nationality, and uh, as a last, uh, I'm going to talk about the introduction uh, First World War. I'm I'm actually passing this because you're going to see this already. The rest of the things. Uh, so let's start with the introduction. Uh, yeah, most of you know that Ottoman Empire. Uh, since its foundation, it's, uh, it's been a monarchy, but uh, there had been two occasions in history where we tried to pass on to uh, constitutional monarchy, but, but we, it failed in, in a year uh, because uh, the Padishah, the uh, ruler, actually had the right to, uh, to, to close the parliament whenever he wants, which, which is a right he, they usually used. So. Uh, as a sec uh, second, uh, they, this is really important because uh, uh, I'm going to go back to that in, in the further parts of the presentation. Ottoman monarchs, they held the uh, title of caliph or the leader of all Islam world, uh, which means that uh, the, all, all of the empire is affected by uh, like, uh, Islam and its Islamic institutions, so people are uh, people have have a like-minded uh, uh, future, and uh, we controlled uh, like uh, minorities, including uh, Arabs and Kurds, which, which were already uh, Muslim as well. So in the fourth, uh, we had a, a small assembly called Divan, but there there was no uh, there was no contribution for. Uh, public in that only uh, the ministers, which were cho chosen by uh, chosen by the monarch, uh, and, and last of all, uh, it was a multi-ethnic empire. We had many many uh, ethnicities in, in our country: Greeks, Serbs, Romanians, uh, other than uh, Hungarians, uh, Arabs, uh, many other that I can not recall right now, uh, and of course. Uh, they they were they were able to enjoy their bliss, though with uh, with paying extra taxes if they are not Muslim. Uh, yeah. So, uh, how did it start? The care of the Ottoman Empire, uh, as the uh, nationalist ideas grew in Europe, uh, we started to lose most of our territories. Uh, in uh, in our west, uh, to in European territories, that's including Macedonia, Albania, uh, Moldova, Romania, uh, Bosnia, Serbia. All of those ter territories were, were lost, at, at, like in in the nineteenth century, with uh, either with uh, wars uh, against uh, Russia or Austria, uh, or uh, rebellions as as Greek rebe rebellion, and uh, hey, you know, please be seated. Uh, and uh, we, what we have left is these areas, but but Ottomans actually tr tried to hold 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 on to that uh, hold on to that uh, little piece of land, and there there were still minorities in there. So Christians, how how do you keep Christians uh, in 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 intact in your uh, empire? And that's when uh, they tried the, uh, implementing the ideology of Ottomanism. And uh, that is actually involving the, those uh, minorities in, in, uh, in politics of Turkey and uh, lifting up uh, the taxes they have to pay. 
but uh, like uh, we had this Tazimat degree to uh, like have this legitimized, and then uh, with this that degree they have had more even more rights. Uh, but the Ottomanism fails because the nationalism is unstoppable, and uh, most most of the Christian uh, lands, uh, as you see here, they, they were lost until 1915. So what we are left is this area, core Turkey, as you know today, the yellow area, and uh, that's the uh, area with uh, that the Arabs live. So given the remaining uh, territories. Which ideology is the best uh, to keep the uh, keep the land intact? Do, do, do you have an idea? Islamic. Yeah, exactly. Because that's what binds us now together. There's no uh, Christian left uh, in Turkey. Only uh, Turks, Kurds, and Arabs left. So there's, there was only one uh, title uh, of uh, padishah or ruler that worked in this uh, in this process, and it's caliph. That the ruler of Islam to keep uh, the uh, lands intact. So, but they were really upset. They lost the territories. I mean, they always thought that they could, they could regain those territories, the Christian lands, by uh, by uh, going into war. And Amir Pasha convinces the Sultan to fight alongside Germans. Is is confident that the Germans are gonna gonna, gonna win the war, which is. As you know, it's not the case. He is also the uh, Pasha, the general uh, who is responsible for uh, Armenian deportation, which is now why why so we are still talking about the this Armenian genocide uh, problem in Turkey and the whole of the world, uh, which is a, 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 an issue I can talk about later. But it's a big issue to talk about now. And, uh, as the Arab revolts, supported by by the British, uh, succeeds, uh, Ottomans loses the last major minority group, which is the Arabs. So uh, the war is lost, and the last ideology to uh, to keep the land intact has failed. That's is Islamism, pan-Islamism, as it's called. So if the war is lost, Germans lost, we lost. So. Uh, in the second part, I'll talk about the, uh, the independence war. But before, uh, we should see how the First World War ended. Uh, so it ended with the armistice of Mudros. The uh, articles were so harsh. Uh, I, I uh, actually extracted two of them. Uh, immediate demobilization of, Tur of the Turkish army, which means we are deprived of our army. And the second, the Allies to have the right of occupy strategic points. Uh, as if, if they fit it, like uh, if there is a security problem there, but it, it is really easy to create uh, a security problem in, in a region. So uh, that that was uh, a really harsh of a treatment to Ottomans, but Ottomans had no card to play. Uh, so as the Turkish insurgency grows, uh, Allies decides to break uh, break deal with partly legitimate Ottoman government uh, because uh, the problem is now that there, there is a small insurgency going on in, in Anatolia and the uh, Allies feel, the British, the French, the Greek, the Italians, Armenians, they feel that uh, Ottomans would uh, lose leg legitimacy. If they lose legitimacy, they will, they will lose their upper hand which they, they broke the deal with in uh, Woodrow's. So uh, they, they forced the Ottomans to, uh, to sign one of the harshest treaties in the world, uh, and that is uh, the Treaty of Serv. How, how do you pronounce it? Serv. Serv. Yeah. Please. Uh, thank you. So uh, this is Turkey, as you know today. Um, this part uh, has been occupied by, by the Greek, the blue part. And uh, this part, uh, Istanbul and the surrounding Mar uh, Marmara Sea, it was occupied both by uh, the British and, uh, and the French. And this part is occupied by the Italians, this part by the French, and this, this part by, by the British. And uh, this part uh, could be a future uh, Kurdish state, this part. And uh, as you see, uh, the British got the oil, and you can see that it is really similar to, to Syria and Iraq today, the border there. 
uh, it was decided by the Sykes-Picot ag agreement in, in 1917. Uh, so, uh, but the treaty was vetoed in, in, the, in the Anatolian assembly. What, 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 what is this assembly? When it was established? So, uh, this man uh, is our founder, and uh, I, I would like to speak a lot about him, but uh, in the context, he, he is a soldier. Uh, he, he was born in uh, where uh, our friend uh, John was c coming from, uh, Selanik, and uh, he, was, he was a son of a border officer, he was he's, he's not even inherited anything. He attended the military school, uh, he r r rise from the ranks, and uh, using, he is an exemplary sold soldier, that's why uh, he, he became a general, a pasha, in, in the future. So he served in Libya and Dardanelles during, during the First World War, and uh, he served with distinction, so, uh, and he, he was a modern man who, who believed in positive, positive sciences and secularism. And uh, which, like the ideals, we, he, we will, he will complete, but he didn't power. Uh, he didn't have power to complete, uh, to realize uh, them. So he was posted uh, to Samsun in 19, 19, uh, 1919, and as you realize, the war was ended, and uh, he was sent sent there to uh, investigate and uh, block any uh, hint of anarchy. Uh, but he, like he was sent by sent there by Ottoman command uh, com command chain, but he did like he either uh, exceeded his order orders or defied his order. By this date, we don't know if the Sultan himself sent him there or he took initiative and started an insurgency in Anatolia against the the occupying powers. So. When he landed Samsu, which is here, uh, it was one of the places that it remains uh, unoccupied uh, by, by, by the Allies. So he started to get, uh, gain public support. He, uh, and for the pol political uh, reasons, he, uh, he uh, had two national conventions assembled in Erzurum. And in Erzurum, it was important because there were uh, 18,000 uh, troops stationed there, in, uh, and they, they were not demobilized. They were left there. Uh, and uh, Kazim Karabekir, who is the commander of, of that Erzurum army, and it's here actually, uh, he gave uh, his like command to him, which he didn't have to because he was an Ottoman officer. But he gave his 18,000 soldiers to uh, uh, Atatürk, which was the start. Uh, which which could start the uh, insurgency or our independence war, uh, as we call it. So, uh, the national pact is adopted. This is very important. This this is something you you might hear in the news when like uh, when Turkey has uh, like interest in the Mosul Kajik here, because uh, at that at that time there there were more Turkmans or Turks lived there. Uh, more more than Kurds or Arabs, so uh, the national pact is a map uh, which uh, the, which which represented the Turkish ideals. Uh, this part just uh, it, it takes Selanik into part as well, uh, which our border right now is is here, and uh, we didn't have Hatayden, we didn't have Hatayden, and this is Iraqi borders right now. So. Our goal in the, the independence war was to make this little territory bigger and uh, reach all the Turkish uh, Turkish cities and make uh, make it a part of the new modern Turkey. And uh, <coughs> Ankara actually became a center of political operations in Anatolia. It, it was uh, away from the occupations. It is still the capital of Turkey. Uh, and the National Assembly was established in 1920, which, uh, which gave legitim legitimation to legitimization to, uh, to the Anatolian government, because then on, there was only Ottoman government, so the Allies only dealt with uh, uh, Ottoman government. So, and the monarchy is abolished in 1921. 
in, in the National Assembly, which means that the Turkish, uh, gov uh, Turkish government in, in Anatolia, they didn't want a, a double state solution with, uh, with the Ottomans. They wanted to abolish it once and for all. So, uh, there were, there, it was a four years of really bloody and uh, harsh war, but we have defeated the Greek troops uh, in, in the wars of uh, Sakarya and Inanur, uh, and uh, we sealed the deal with uh, Buick Tarus, uh, the Battle of Dumlukna, which opened the roads for Smyrna, which was the last uh, occupied place in, 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 uh, in Turkey. And the rest, of, the rest of the occupiers, they supported the Greek, but they did not put, put up a fight when the, when the Turkish uh, uh, Turkish insurgency won the fight. Uh, so uh, the Treaty of Lausanne uh, gave the new Turkish government legitimacy and opportunity to declare independence in the sea as the capital issues were lifted. Now uh, allies take only Turkish government as as the uh, as the legitimate power. Now, uh, which means Ottoman uh, power is just you know it, it is. In, in, in action, it is not non-existent anymore. Uh, so, uh, the treaty has marked the map of modern Turkey as you know it right now, with the exception of Batum, Batum and Hatay. Uh, we gave Batum uh, away uh, to Soviets because they helped us without without asking anything, uh, because we we were fighting imperialism in in, in their perception. So. And we, uh, we have received uh, Hatay from French with, with a co court, re uh, court decree. Uh, the French actually gave away that, that land and, uh, well, uh, let's say that most of the people living there were Turkish and uh, French uh, didn't want to hold on to that uh, particular uh, land. So, the war is over. It is now time to build the, the modern Turkey as we know. Uh, so we have a, the Mustafa Kemal Atatürk as a leader who has uh, was a modern who is a modern-minded uh, person. So he wants to change all that represented Ottoman Empire to a country that is modernized, that is uh, that can be compete compete that can be competing the other uh, contemporary countries. So. What we needed first was, was the new constitution. It was 1924 uh, constitution uh, with three basic ideas, nationalism, populism, and uh, secularism. But it, secularization was not uh, easy for Turkey. For centuries, we lived in, in Islamic rule. So, uh, like, uh, for, you might realize that we uh, established the republic but there has been one year before we uh, lifted caliphate because uh, there were people, there were uh, representatives in, in the assembly who feared that, the, that there, would be, there would be riots in Anatolia if uh, the power of uh, caliphate would, would be lifted. There would be no binding power left for, the, for those people. So, uh, establishment of uh, directorate of religious affairs not a ministry, just a religious affairs, it, like it, the directorate, because uh, we are a secular country and we cannot have uh, a religious institution in our uh, in our government system. But uh, religion must be governed, anyways, because one sheikh or imam or any other religion man can come up uh, with an idea and gain supporters, which, happen, which is happening right now with the Gulenist movement, actually. So, uh, this, this was intended to block any uh, radical uh, interpretations of Islam. Uh, so, religious courts were, were uh, abolished, and modernization of the education system uh, and ministry of education was established as well. These were the early uh, reforms, and uh, some of the reforms in, in the social life, in the economic life, and the political life. As you see, uh, we adopted the civil code of uh, Switzerland, people and commercial law, and the family law, because uh, Switzerland were, were believed to be the, the, the to have the mo most modern 
kind of uh, codes in, in, the, in the world at that time. And uh, we had this language re uh, reform. Until this, this very date, we were using the Arabic alphabet, uh, which, were hard, hard, which was hard for the, for the people, and literacy rate was, the rate was really low. And, uh, but the, uh, with, the, uh, like with the establishment of Turkish Language Institute, it, it, it's made easier for, for the students uh, to understand. Uh, the new alphabet. So equality and non-discrimination, voting rights uh, for women uh, was given in 1930 and it was exceeded further in 1935. And uh, you must realize that uh, Turkey has given this right to women before many countries did, even Britain itself. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't know that, but I knew Britain for sure. So uh, it's still uh, an ideal uh, taken uh, from, from Switzerland. Uh, so social, social, uh, social, cultural reforms, rules concerning clothing, uh, the diminished impact uh, of religion in daily life. I mean, uh, burqa wasn't banned, but it was, uh, let's say, it wasn't looked, um, it wasn't perceived that good by by society. But uh, everyone, except instead of fest, you know, fest with the round thing, uh, they have to wear the hats. Like uh, until re really recently. In Turkey, yes, that's a fun fact. Actually, people had to wear hats to to, to go out. Otherwise, uh, it's it, there's a pit penal result to not to wear a hat when when you're outside. But it, actually, it, it wasn't implemented in Turkey. But there was a steel room uh, in Turkey to do that. So, uh, economic uh, reforms. We industrialized the country by state initiatives. But of course, uh, there was this great depression in the world. Which, which was affecting Turkey as well, and uh, it's, uh, the, the crisis affected Turkey in 1928 and uh, 29. So, so, of course, there were criticisms, there, were ang there was anger against the new modernized country, because it, it, for centuries the country is solid solidified by Islam. Uh, so there had been tr tries to apply all the demo democratic uh, uh, in initiatives, uh, uh, like passing from single party period to, to multi party period. It was tried uh, two, two times in this uh, time interval. Uh, there was uh, Progressive Republican Party and the Liberal Republican Party in like five year difference between them, but they they short-lived, and this is why. First, uh, the, the Progressive Re Republican Party uh, was uh, thought to be responsible for this uh, Kurdish revolt in 1925, and the uh, this Kurdish revolt happened was the restoration of uh, Islamic rule and uh, establishing <coughs> the Kurdish state in, in the south southeast part of Turkey, which is really similar to the terrorism problem we are having right now. Uh, so. Uh, yes, uh, and uh, it was led by this man, Sheikh Said, and it, it, uh, there had been a bloody war to, against Sheikh Said to, uh, to, uh, to suppress the revolt for once and for all. So, uh, so the result was Progressive Re Re Republican Party was. Uh, uh, was lifted, uh, I mean, abolished by the governments because simply there was no, uh, there was no way to co continue in, in multi-party system. And there has been a second uh, attempt, which happened with the uh, Liberal Republican Party. This they had the uh, pretext of government having too, too much uh, intervention in, in in the economy, so uh, they rather had a, a free economy, as we know, a liberal economy. But the problem is, any time this man, Petyokia, has gone to talk, people thought he would bring the uh, calif caliphate back, which was not him, because he, he, would just, he just wanted to be a liberal person, which is very away from, uh, for, uh, from the uh, conservative uh, ideas. So uh, what happened? Uh, in 1930, there, there was this big revolt in, in Menemah. And he, uh, 
this man, Lieutenant Kubila, was sent to uh, suppress the revolt, but they only had plastic bullets. So they aimed at the crowd coming towards them, they fired their shots, but nothing happened because the, the, the bullets was, uh, were uh, rubber. So the uh, crowd naturally felt like they're, they're invincible, they're protected by God. So they attacked him and his soldiers, they massacred him. So, uh, and the pretext of this was, of course, restoring the caliphate again. And uh, fearing the uh, problems uh, here, Petioca actually d d disbanded his party because uh, there was no, uh, simply, simply there was no way to proceed from there. And uh, the perpetrators were called by, by, by the local officers and they were executed by hanging. And this is uh, why this era is called, called undemocratic a dictatorship. They deem it to be dictatorship because of this tribunals. Uh, because they criticized uh, it to be a summary justice. It is really similar, uh, Ivan, to uh, revolutionary uh, to tribunals in, uh, after the French Revolution during the reign of terror. Uh, there were just summary uh, uh, justice and summary executions. Uh, so, uh, during the war, only during the war, six, six, 60,000 suspects were tried and one, nearly 1,000 of them were hanged. Uh, and after the war, as, as many of these key people, uh, as many as of these people were hanged, uh, actually, and these courts were remained uh, intact uh, until 1927, uh, which uh, I don't know. How, uh, I have many things about this, but I don't have time to express it right now. So, a great mind passes away. Uh, in 1938, uh, Mustafa Kemal Atatürk dies. In his 57, he died from cirrhosis. He, he was a drinker. Uh, so his eternal place is in uh, Anas and this is what he said. Uh, like his ideals should live, even if he dies. So he built a nation, a thriving nation, which uh, held the the Islamic uh, rule for for hundreds of years, and now. He changed that uh, society in such a short time to, to a modern society who believes in po po positive science, equality, human rights. Uh, so, but my opinion at, at the last is whoever replaced Ataturk like, uh, in, in the following years, the leaders, they, didn't ha uh, they couldn't implement or share the ideals of Ataturk. So we couldn't have a glorious Turkey uh, uh, after his death. So, conclusion. These are my references and links. And uh, if you come to my next lecture, uh, these are the things you're going to see. Uh, in, uh, is Ismet in an era, which he, he was the prime minister during the uh, Atatürk era, and now he became uh, the president. And uh, he, you can see the uh, multi-party system, it starts now. And Second World War and neutrality, Turkey remained neutral in the Second World War until uh, 1945, which we uh, declared war on Japan, which we will not fight, just to sit on the uh, peace table. So, uh, there was a big famine in the 1940s because of the war we couldn't trade and uh, the, 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 this famine affected uh, all of us this is why still my grandfather buys uh, potatoes by sack like this so uh, and soviet threat obviously it, 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 it is trying to be mount after the second world war because turkey is really close to soviets actually we are bordering them right now uh, at, at that time with like from the Georgia and Armenia and uh, the current government decides to go uh, uh, and uh, implement the Marshall Plan which, which is offered by, by the Americans to Turkey and Greece and uh, of course we be became a NATO, NATO member at the time to protect ourselves from the Soviet threat 
And uh, we, we, as always, even from Ottoman times, we tried to become a European country. So our f uh, first trials to be, be, uh, a, be, be part of a European community has started there with the uh, with signing of the Rome, Rome Treaty, we, and we became half member of uh, of uh, Euro European uh, civil community. So that is it, folks. Uh, if you liked it, uh, I'm really uh, elated. Uh, thank you for your contribution. If you have any uh, questions and answers, uh, I mean uh, questions. <laughs> yeah, but probably you have answers too. Yes. Any uh, interpretations, please share with me right now. Is it, is it okay if we keep recording while we have questions and critique? It's true. Why not? Now you will know about, if you see something uh, about Turkey in television, now you will know what you are talking about, because this is our past. And more I talk about this, the second chapter, you will understand more, even more. Uh, they would, uh, they they would be shaking their heads like this in, in, in when I was talking about the uh, the tribunals mm -hmm. and because they talked about it a lot in their their political speeches when they tried to degrade Atatürk, but uh, actually um, it is discussable, uh, debatable uh, if if that was necessary because uh, as it happened with the revolution in France, uh, the, there was there was a need for justice and the the problem is. You're, you have this new country with with, with uh, exactly different ideas, like contradictory ideas with the pre previous ones. So how do you keep the order? So uh, that's a question, big question. People then uh, they answered it because they had to, but we have we have the provocative to uh, discuss it now. But for me, you can discuss it for, for hours, and you still. How, how political would you say you are on this? Are there some other First of all, uh, we, we don't have a really uh, good, you, in Turkey you couldn't have a uh, really good political conversation because of the things I will talk to you about in, in the third chapter. <laughs> because after the coup uh, in Turkey in 1980, uh, the uh, political involvements in, uh, in universities and schools were minimized so that the people would not be... Uh, fighting each other over leftist and rightist issues. But would you say it's objective, what you have described here, or could it be... Uh, no, uh, uh, it's no, not, it's not. It's uh, from your point of view. Let's say some part of it is just facts, and uh, my point of view stands, especially for uh, when I talked about uh, Atatürk, because not many people uh, in Turkey uh, love him. Actually, uh, the the even government right now, he's uh, Erdogan actually tried to embrace him because uh, he, his last hope is to uh, gain the support of the uh, the progressivist, uh, the Atatürk, uh, the Kemalists. So, but uh, still in Turkey, he, we let's say I I have a feeling that we are uh, ungrateful a bit towards them. Towards Atatürk. Yeah, and, and talk, talking about the, the, the general opinion that is forming right now in Turkey. So when you were, you were talking about the, the switch from the caliphate to a, you know, a modern, mm -hmm. um, rational, uh, scientific country, mm -hmm. do you still see those conflicts in contemporary Turkey now? Sure. I mean, most of you know that when the, this government yeah. came to power in 2002, they immediately started to uh, erase uh, the ideals of, of Atatürk one by one. So, no, we're not going, going to be a caliphate uh, in, in the future. We, are, we, uh, we will remain half secular, let's say, with the current government we have right now. They cannot dare to declare uh, a, a caliphate with the 
uh, amount of uh, progressivist people in Turkey, which uh, had the thir like 35% uh, of the Turkey, actually. Is, uh, like, that's what the poll says, it's progressivist. If you have 35% of your uh, country progressive, progressivist, then it's a bit hard to uh, bring back the caliphate without any uh, interference or objection. But there's still this, um, still this conflict or difficulty between being progressive, being modern, and yet at the same time uh, having, you know, Islam as your as your main belief. Yeah. Uh, you gave the example to me the other day when we were talking about the, the drinking alcohol, yeah. for example. So that goes against the uh, Quran, mm -hmm. and yet it's still a big part of your culture. Yeah, exactly. Uh, let's say that uh, there are many cultural and, like, Religion and culture it has many reflections of people, on people, but the pol political people have the power to uh, change that, and which Atatürk tried, uh, tried to do. do. Uh, he changed uh, the, the bad side of culture, the bad side of religion, and he tried, tried to get, get the ideals from the West, which he thought was the, was the modern side of the, the world. Any other questions? I'm sorry, yeah. I, I knew that. Maybe it could be difficult um, because we don't have the overview of the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Maybe that could be done something uh, for the coming up lectures where, where it's more and uh, there are some more uh, graphics showing us uh, one, around which time are you talking and who's in power at this year you're talking about now. Mm -hmm. Because it can be uh, hard to remember where are we in the history now. Yeah. Uh, we're in, in 1938. Yes, of course. Of course. But uh, maybe you just have a timeline in the bottom of each slide. Actually, I, I have it on the agenda. So uh, if you want to check it out again, I can show it to you. I passed that part a bit quick, uh, quicker than I was supposed to because I didn't know if there was enough time to do everything I wanted to do. But I think it's very clear that we're, talk we're listening to, a, yeah. to an export expert here. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> I think I think what you mentioned would have been a good. Like, this is a good um, representation, but maybe you could have referred back every now and again when you when you. Uh, I did. When you, yeah, but, but when did. you when you switch between time <laughs> periods, so okay, so that's what happened. We're moving into this area. Uh -huh. um, Show this yeah. slide many times. Maybe. Yeah, to keep the keep the overview in your head because, like Matthias said, I think. I tried to do it like this. Uh, put time intervals in in the. Sure, but I mean, with that alone, it's hard to then uh, connect it to the to yeah, bigger no. picture. But I try to be as chronological as possible, let's say. Sure, mm -hmm. yeah, sure. And it's not, it's a lot of information, it's a lot of, um, uh, yeah, a lot of history to combine into.